well-known reference to the mythical Atlantis by Theophrastus of ancient Greece. An excerpt from Emilianos, who saved an unknown reference to the mythical Atlantis of Theophrastus, commentary of Alexander the Great. This is a dialogue between Midas and Selinus. I kept the style of the text the author says as I read it in the book, The Amazing Revelations on Ancient Greece by Antonius Hallas. This is the description. Theopombos narrates a conversation between Midas, Pyrgos, and Selinus. Selinus is the child of a nymph, god, immortal, uh, in the nature of the Cretan man, since he was also immortal. Many others were performed among themselves, but the following were the most important of what Selenius said in his superior wisdom to Midas. So he said that Europe, Asia, and Africa were islands uh, in comparison to Epirus, uh, northern Greece that is. They existed in ancient times beyond the known world. So great was its size, this continent was the last to feed giant animals on it. We're talking about Atlantis. And the people living on it were twice the size of the people of the time when the story took place. So in other words, they were like Nephilim giants. And the time of their life was not as long as we live, but double. There were many cities on it, on, on, on the uh, continent of Atlantis, and the lives of individuals were different, and their laws were contrary to ours. Their cities were very rich, and one of those cities had a population of more than a million. Gold and clay were nevertheless in great quantity. Then Elianos narrates that there was a constant war, mainly between two cities, one of which was called Machimos and the other Efsevius. So the pious ones spoke in peace and deep uh, plutonium and received the fruits from the earth without plows and lives, because in them everything was left untouched and untroubled. They are healthy and immune throughout their lives, and they die laughing and suffering terribly. Now, they were undoubtedly righteous so that the quote-unquote gods did not feel the need to study with them. The inhabitants of the city of Machimos, even if they were very militant, were also armed, constantly fighting and enslaving their neighbors. In this way, this city begins with many nations, and he, uh, they rarely die, die of diseases because most of them succumb to wars. This was not the abundance of gold and silver for them, so that they had less value for them, or as much as iron was for me, he says. They once tried to live in, an, in their own country and cross the ocean with innumerable troops and reach the far north, but realizing the misery in which we, they, we live, they despised to go further. Theophrastus, 372 BC to um, 5 BC, was a philo uh, to 287 BC, was a philosopher of antiquity. He is considered a follower of the work of Aristotle, which he succeeded in the management of the walking school. They used to walk as they used to philosophize. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Most information about the life of Theophrastus is taken from Theogenes, author of The Lives of Philosophers. Theophrastus was born 372 BC in Eresus of Lesbos, which was the island of Italy of northern Aegean in Greece. His father was the rich merchant Melantus. The name appears on the base of the bust in the picture, and his real name was Tirtamos. Initially, he took his first lessons near Lefkipos, while later he left the city of Eresos and went to Athens, where he began to study philosophy as a student of Plato. After the death of his teacher in 347 BC, he followed Aristotle. As we know, Aristotle was Alexander the Great's teacher. Aristotle, who distinguishes his learning and intelligence, first named him Efstratos and later Theophrastos. The appreciation that Aristotle had for Theophrastos is also proved by the fact that when in 323 BC, Aristotle was accused of disrespect and was forced to flee to Halkida, just uh, about a, an hour north of Athens, Greece, 
donated his library to Theophrastus and entrusted him with the management of the walking school. Theophrastus remained in charge of the school for 25 years, and during this time he taught and left a lot of writing, and during this period it's also said that the students of the school exceeded 2,000, and among them were Meander, the kings of Macedonia, Philip and Cassander, as well as the king of Egypt, Ptolemy I. Theophrastus was never actively involved in politics, but devoted himself entirely to science and philosophy. He died around 287 BC, and until the end of his life, he taught and worked. Theophrastus's work was particularly rich, as it is estimated that he wrote a total of about 240 works, which deal with a number of topics around ethics, logic, rhetoric, the history of science or metaphysics, and especially botany and zoology. Today, many mainly excerpts from his work are preserved, as well as some complete texts, which are about planets of history, nine books, about plants and causes, six books, as well as his most famous work, Characters. The first two works are probably the first books in the field of botany from antiquity to the Middle Ages. An important legacy in botany is that the endemic palm tree of southern Greece has been christened in his honor today as the Phoenix Theophrasti, as he was the first to mention the existence of this plant in Greece in his work. And this is from a Greek article I've uh, translated for you. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.